This conference will now be recorded. Friends, we have been. This conference will now be recorded. Very good morning, students. We have been discussing POIQs from J Mains 2020. And we had already discussed a few questions. Now, today we have got some more questions for discussion. So this is, so these questions are from the SIP 2, okay? 6th September 2020, 6th September 2020, and this is SIP 2. This conference will now be recorded. Mm -hmm. This conference will now be recorded. Very good evening, students. We have been discussing previous questions from the J Mains paper. So we were discussing the paper from 6th September 2020, SIP 2. We had already discussed few questions. So today we'll be discussing some more questions. So let us see this question says, consider a force F on a charge Q due to a Uniformly charged spherical cell of radius capital R. So when you have a charged spherical cell of radius R, okay, so this is your charged spherical cell which is carrying charge Q, and you know for a spherical cell the charge will be if it is positive charge, positive Q. So the whole charge will be actually distributed over uniformly over the surface, okay? Which of the following statement is true for F, that is the force, if Q is placed at a distance R from the center of cell? So let us say some arbitrary distance. And if you see the options, then you will get the uh, answers. Look here, this says, First option says force F is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught capital Q small q by R square. This is for all R. That means if you keep the force inside, outside, everywhere, this will be the expression for the force. This option says this thing. Now the second option says the force will be capital Q small q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught capital R square if it is inside somewhere, okay? Inside. So if R is less than capital R, that means inside. Inside the force is capital Q small q by 4 pi epsilon naught and capital R square, okay? Then third option says the force is less than Q, Q by 4 pi epsilon naught capital R square and greater than zero for R less than, that means inside, okay? The last option says the force is capital Q small q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R square when R is outside the spherical cell. See, force means, you know, electric force, how do we get electric force on a charge? we get electric field into the charge. So that will, that will be the force. So if you have a charge nearby, then the electric field at that particular position into Q, that will give you the force. But look now for this spherical cell, the whole charge is residing outside the cell. So no electric field will be there inside that we have already learned in electrostatics. So there will be no electric field here. So electric field for this cell will be zero at R less than R. Okay. 
and it will be equal to capital Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square at any outside point, any point outside the cell. Okay. So what will be the force then? Just multiply Q here. So you get the force. So this is the force. So look, this fourth option is actually correct. All right. Now let us move on to the next problem. So this problem says two identical electric point dipoles have dipole moment P1 is equal to P i cap and the other one is this is P2. P2 is equal to minus P i cap are held on x axis at a distance from each other. That means you know, you know, you have x axis. Let us erase this. So you have your x axis like this, and there are two dipoles. One has a P1 point dipole, that means their dimension is very, very less. Okay. So this is P1, okay? See, it is directed along the positive x-axis, so I cap. So it is actually P I cap, okay? And another dipole on the x-axis itself, but it is directed in the opposite to this P1, according to this, statement of the problem okay so this is the thing and they are actually since they have taken they, they have been taken as point dipole they have actually they they are having very very small dimension so this distance is given as a they are separated by a distance distance a okay when released they move along x-axis so if see they are held fixed okay by external agency now if they are released or they are released to move freely then they will move along x-axis okay with their direction of the dipole moments remaining unchanged so di dipole moment direction of dipole moment will remain same that means i cap and minus i cap but they will move each other, like move towards each other. If the mass of each dipole is small m, their speed, speed when they are infinitely far apart is, okay? What will be the speed when they are infinitely far apart? Okay? So when released, they, move along x-axis with the direction of their dipole moments remaining unchanged. The, if the mass of each dipole their speed, dipole is m, then the speed when they are infinitely far apart. Okay, so I think one, one comment I have made mistake. So they will be actually moving apart from each other, okay? apart from each other this is because you know this will be, this will be kind of see positive positive they will ripple each other kind of that okay all right so see in this case this problem could be solved by using energy conservation but what is the energy we are going to conserve here that is the potential energy and kinetic energy that is like total energy total mechanical energy conservation we have to apply so 
we have to apply mechanical energy conservation energy conservation okay see at this configuration when they are a distance apart you know what happens the interaction energy between two dipole interaction energy or interaction potential energy you can say interaction energy means potential energy interaction energy between between two dipoles is given by between two dipoles see their magnitude of the dipole moments are same so this potential energy will be or interaction energy will be given by p dv minus dr where dv is the potential created see if i just consider one dipole then the dip the interaction energy due to the other dipole will be see the potential created at that particular position okay where we are going to uh, find out that potential energy okay so this pot this is the potential created by a dipole okay and the variation of that okay with respect to the distance okay so in this case you know the dipole the potential potential this v is potential potential due to a dipole due to a dipole and we know that if we know this dipole moment you know dipole moment it is actually kp by r cube okay k p by r cube if r is the distance at where like see if i have a dipole like this so dipole see potential at any xl point which is at r distance away the potential will be k p by r cube k is the 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that is the constant here okay 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught so that is actually k all right so if we put it here look i have p and here k p by r cube and this i have to take derivative with respect to r okay then what we get we get see if we take this thing out kp square kp square and this is d d d r of 1 by r cube okay look then what we are getting u is equal to minus k p square d d r of 1 by r cube this will be i think this is not r cube sorry this potential will be actually r square okay electric field will be q okay this will be r square so potential is varied for a dipole as 1 by r square not 1 by r and electric field for a dipole varies as r cube so here if i take this derivative what we get we get 2 minus 2 and this minus i am just making it i'm just making it positive k p squared and this will be r cube finally so here r is how much r is a here so what is the potential energy that is 2 p square by 4 pi epsilon naught a cube in this case now when they are released you know what will happen this 
potential energy, the total potential energy will be actually converted to kinetic energy for both. Okay, so here I'll apply. conservation of energy okay energy means total energy okay so at far in far apart infinitely far apart there, there will be no potential energy so whole energy will be kinetic kinetic energy for both of them half mv square plus half mv square because i have two dipoles and this will be exactly equal to this total potential energy or interaction energy. Okay. Now this will be M B square. This is P square by 2 pi epsilon naught A cube. And see this mass I'll multiply here. So I have to find out V, right? So V will be then, see P by A and this is into one over square root of two pi epsilon naught M into A, okay, this is A. So this will be the answer, let, let us see. Okay, I'll just write properly the answer so v is equal equal to p by a dipole moment by the distance between them and then one over two pi epsilon naught m a okay look there are options here so yeah so the first option is correct for this question okay let us go to the next problem. So this is not a numerical problem, just a simple analytical question. And this is from your experimental. Experimental part is there, right? So experimental or instrument parts. A circuit to verify Ohm's law uses a meter, voltmeter in series or parallel connected correctly to the register so verification of ohm's law you know verification of ohm's law you know what we do we just apply certain voltage and take the rating of current okay apply certain voltage some suppose some five five values will like some five different voltage you apply okay or in other words in other way what we do we change the current and see the voltage drop across the register and you know what will be the circuit diagram for this uh, the correct circuit diagram is this so you have a battery you have some connecting wires and you know you have an am ammeter ammeter to know the current in the circuit then you connect the register having resistance r and you need to find out the voltage across this voltage across this register okay so you have to you have to use a voltmeter voltmeter in series with the register so this is what actually was uh, the question see so they have asked you to find out the correct circuit diagram for this actually okay for verifying ohm's law so in this case if you uh, change see this actually you can use one rheostat or potentiometer, whatever you like. So you can use a rheostat over here. Rheostat, that means see, variable register by which you can control the current in the circuit. Okay, so you'll set different, different current. I'll just take this as x-axis 
and y axis see this is b so i'll take different different currents just by varying the resistance like this resistance in the rheostat i'll set different different currents as i like that i will be that reading i will be getting from ammeter which is connected in the series of the circuit and i'll get the voltage drop across the resistor from the voltmeter which is connected in parallel combination of this resistor okay all right so then we have to plot i versus v and see reciprocal so slope will be v by i v by i V is equal to I R, right? V by I will give you give you the resistance, okay? Slope, slope will give you the resistance. This is a linear one, so you can just take Y by X also. All right, so the options are emitter is always connected in series and voltmeter is in parallel. This is obviously correct. I don't need to read other options, but still see still what are the options given here let, let us read those so both emitter and voltmeter must be connected in parallel this is not possible because emitter if we connect in parallel that is not going to help you okay and emitter is always in parallel this is wrong emitter will be always in series okay and voltmeter will be in parallel so anyway we have got the answers so this is the Hard question. Now let us go to the next question. So this is very very important and also a little bit uh, medium medium type like medium type question. This is not very hard, not very easy also. So what is this question? The question is that the center of mass of solid hemisphere, solid hemisphere of radius r is equal to eight centimeter is x cm. So the coordinate of center of mass for a hemisphere is given as x centimeter x centimeter from the center of the flat surface so this is the flat surface you can see that so if this is the center from here center of mass coordinate let us okay so center of mass coordinate will be at x distance x centimeter away from that center and that x centimeter is what you have to find out so this is actually a solid solid hemisphere hemisphere and let us say it has mass mass m capital m okay and you know the radius i have taken here as capital r capital r you can see that in this figure so you can see if i just think that the center is coinciding with the origin of the coordinate system okay suppose this is z this is x and this is y now by symmetry you can see the center of mass will be com will be will be on the y axis okay center of mass will be on the y axis by symmetry we can see that if you are confused or if you don't know what is symmetry by symmetry means see center of mass will be uh, center of mass coordinate will be situated in, in the region where there is more mass okay where is there is where there is more mass see this is this this is the flat surface and there the whole mass is actually situated here so where will the center mass somewhere here okay on the curved surface here all right so that's why i'm i'm saying here since this yeah so by symmetry we can see that the center mass will be on the y-axis but now how to find out the center of mass see if i want to find out center of mass coordinate y cm then you know you know the formula y dm is equal to okay y dm this is integration divided by dm so dm 
integration dm is the total mass of the hemisphere that i can write, write directly capital m so y dm into capital m where dm is actually the mass of elementary portion okay see here to find out center of mass of this solid hemisphere i'm just considering a disk okay disk okay a disk at y distance from the center of this flat surface where i have taken the uh, origin of the coordinate system and see this disk has radius let us say that is small r so what i have done first step i have just considered a disk which is at y like y distance away from the origin and it has radius r and let us say this thickness to be dy thickness is dy so this will have some certain thickness okay so why i have considered this here because it is solid sphere if you just keep a uh, disc like say if i have bigger disc middle then i have comparatively smaller disc okay then comparatively smaller disc like that if i just collect or gather all of them together then i'll get this hemisphere so this is what is the idea to consider the disc okay in case of spherical cell you can consider consider ring but in this case you have to consider this because this hemisphere is actually solid sphere okay now so far is fine so far everything is all right now look i have to do this actually y dm by m what is this dm dm is actually mass of this elementary mass of elementary disk okay mass of elementary disk so how to find out dm so to find out dm you know what you have to do dm actually i can find out like this rho into dv dv means the area of the uh, sorry volume volume of the elementary elementary disk okay so this dv is actually volume of the elementary or element this element okay disk element all right then we have to actually find out what is dv dv see when i have a thick disk like this i have certain thickness and this suppose this has area sorry uh, radius radius smaller then you know i can write the volume or or elementary volume dv is equal to pi r square area into thickness okay area into thickness is thickness is volume so this thickness i have taken as dy so i'll write this as pi r square dy so this will give you the volume so pi r square dy now look this figure here see y r and capital r capital r this is actually radius of this hemisphere so that's why this r okay i can get a nice relationship between these three look i can get r square is equal to small r square plus capital sorry small y square so this distance square plus this distance square is equal to this so this is actually a right angle triangle you can see that so this one okay like okay from here i can get a relation between y and other other uh, like distances so r square will be is equal to capital r square minus y square so this i can put it here look here in the elementary volume i can put here capital r square minus y square
4 into dy. So this is the elementary volume. So what is the rho? Rho is actually mass per unit volume. Let us say the mass of the hemisphere is this and volume is half of the volume of the sphere. So 2 by 3 pi capital R cube. So I will multiply this here if I want to get the mass, okay, mass of the elementary disk. So dm is rho dv and dv is pi r square minus y square dy. Look here then, this pi, this pi goes up. So here, you know, I get 3 by 2, 3 by 2. R square minus Y square divided by R cube into dy. So this is what I get as dm. So once I get dm, then I just go for this integration. Sorry, this integration look here. I'll just do this integration here. Y dm by m is the center of coordinate, okay? So center of mass coordinate. So this I'll write here. I have got everything done here. So what I'll write, this portion will just keep. Other portions we can just erase out. So we have got dm to be 3 by 2 capital R square minus R square divided by R cube into dy. Okay, y dm. So y com is equal to 1 over m 0 to r integration. Okay, then this is 3 by 2. dy okay let me just clean this also so that i can do the calculation properly here itself so look this 3 by 2 let us keep this here this m is here i'm sorry this dm there should be some m by rho right so there will be 3 by 2 m so m m actually cancel out here so only this thing so r q i'll keep it here and then let us do the integration here actually you should have y y dm right so y will be there here one y will be here so this is r square y dy minus 0 to r y cube by r cube dy we do this integration then it is see i'll put the values of this uh, integration limits also so this will be y square by 2 so r to the power 4 by 2 minus here it is r to the power 4 by 4 r cube okay so this will be actually 8 sorry 4 then 2 minus 1 okay so 1 by 4 it will be so here it will be r to the power 4 by 4 I'm sorry, this RQ is taken common already. So 
so this r cube here this is this one so this y q so y to the power 4 just a minute why dm y is actually why i'm just skipping fine y r square see look here we have got r square that i have kept here y square y dm okay this is fine this is y cube y, y cube by 4 this is also fine this is r cube right we'll see I see this is not R. I'm sorry. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so there was no R over here, but I had written that's why the confusion was coming. So actually, the answer will be 3R by 8. Okay, 3R by 8. All right. So this is actually center of coordinate. So look where the center of coordinate will be like a center of mass coordinate will be for this solid sphere somewhere at 3 by r sorry 3 into r by 8 so this is the center of coordinate see here it is given r is look then here what we get center of mass coordinate if this is i x so x is actually in the question it is given x so x is equal to 3r by 8 where r is given as 8 centimeter 8 centimeter by 8 centimeter again so this will give you 3 centimeter okay so x will be here in this blank space x will be 3 in centimeter okay so this is the answer so the main point over here is how to find out the center of mass coordinate for this hemispherical solid sphere okay solid hemispherical sphere all right so in in case of cell you have to take a ring instead of taking so in that case you know you have to take uh, 2 pi r dr okay that you have to take as 2 pi r into dy you have to take the volume as this okay or you, you have to take the area instead of taking volume okay all right so this is done now let us see this problem this problem says an engine so this is an heat engine this is heat engine okay so an engine operates by taking monoatomic ideal gas so monoatomic ideal gas so this is important monoatomic ideal gas okay this is one information and an engine operates by taking monoatomic ideal gas through the cycle in the figure the percentage efficiency of the engine is close to we have to find out the efficiency where the cycles are given here in the pv diagram okay the working working of this engine is depicted over here from this car see here i'm monotomic gas but since it is not mentioned how much is the mole i'm taking a number number of mole to be one okay so you know efficiency is found out 
by taking the ratio work output divided by heat input okay heat input so what is heat input here and what is our work output so work output in pv diagram will be the area of this shaded region okay this will be the work done so let us find out what is this work done here better to go here i'll write here work done so work done will be area of this particular square portion a b c d okay this portion area of this second portion look then this is a square you know so this side it is 2p0 say uh not square this is a kind of rectangle okay rectangular shape and this has length ad this is b0 so what will be the work done area so length into breadth 2p0 v0 this is the work done then heat input you have to check here so look i'll just clean this figure now this heat input you know while expansion while expansion happens it takes heat okay see here heat input will happen heat input here there will be heat input okay and here it will be heat re reject heat heat out okay heat release we can say here heat release has not been given anything so we don't bother much about it because we are using this formula okay work output divided by heat input okay so heat input will be work done sorry heat due on this path okay so q a b plus so total heat q in will be q a b plus q b c now look if i consider the a b path here what is constant this is actually v constant v zero so this process is actually see this is isobaric process right iso baric process in isobaric process volume does not change right so in that case how do you get the heat total heat we know in that case you know you have to write see this this much i am writing here first so this will be n cv and dt and bc you look this bc it is actually constant pressure this process is constant pressure pressure is constant here see p0 so how do you get the q or heat in this process you will get n cp dt now we have to find out what is n anyway i have taken one so cp dt plus cp dt cp dt so dt these dt's are not same actually dt along ab and dt along bc change in the temperature along ab and along bc okay so i may require this figure let me take this figure to the next page and do this calculation look then cv dt so q in is cv dt and cp dt cv and cp we may be able to find out for monoatomic gas you know degrees of freedom you know the degrees of freedom for monoatomic gas it will be 3 by so 3 degrees of freedom so 3 by 2 r and t so this is total internal energy okay at constant volume so i can find out cv is equal to du dt sorry du dt okay du dt so by doing that i will get 3 by 2 and cp how do i get cp is r plus so this is r actually cb so it will be 
r plus 3 by 2r okay so it will be 5 by 2r so cp and cb we have found out fine but what is this dt along ab and dt along bc this you have to find out see this is an ideal gas right it will follow pv is equal to rt for one mole gas see then for ab process see for this ab process i'll write see this uh, p0 v0 see p at at this pa 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 i'll take the differences maybe okay because i have to take the temperature difference right so i have to take pa pa minus or in other way pb vb minus pa va is equal to ta so it is expansion so temperature decreases we can say or i will take the anyway the magnitude so ta minus t b or tb minus ta whatever you take tb minus ta okay tb minus ta so this is dt ab so pb see p is 3 p0 here v is v0 minus at this position p0 v0 so this is actually dt ab right so this is actually 2 p0 and v0 so look what i will write so i have got this cb is equal to 3 by 2r okay and cp is equal to 5 by 2r i am finding out now what are dt's corresponding dt's so this is 3 by 2r see i have to write actually for getting t so this will be divided by r there will be divided by r here okay so divided by r yeah 2 p0 p0 divided by r because i have to write t is equal to p v by r okay so that is what it is here okay so see dt ab i have to write 2 p0 v0 by r so similarly if we try to find out the temperature difference this dt bc look so this cp we we have found out 5 by 2 r okay 5 by 2 r for monatomic gas and dtbcc this this is the point and this is the point p0 v0 see so here p is constant so you know there will be r here 3 p0 into v0 here at this sorry i have to go for from higher to lower so 3 p0 right 3 p0 into 2 p0 minus see this point has this point was that 3 p0 and 2 p0 and this point has 3 p0 minus v0 okay 3 p0 minus 3 p0 v0 actually okay look, let me write this part properly this is 3 into 2 p0 v0 if you can see for this point okay because here v is 2 v0 and p is 3 p0 okay 3 into 2 so 6 p0 v0 i hope you have understood this 6 p0 v0 minus minus this point this has 3 p0 and this is v0 3 p0 v0 divided by r okay so these are these are so we get here this to be 3 p0 v0 plus here you get 5 by 2 
थ्री इंटू पी जीरो भि जीरो थ्री पी जीरो भि जीरो कमन वन प्लस फाइव बै टू दैट मीन यू नो थ्री पी जीरो भि जीरो इंटू सेभेन बै टू अल right let let us keep this and then see we have got work done so we we will put it here let us put this here so what we have got see this much 2 p0 v0 2 p0 v0 and this i have got 3 into 7 by 2 p0 v0 so this p0 v0 i can strike them out and see we are Calculating efficiency, we have to multiply 100 to get in percentage. Okay, let me multiply 100 here. Okay, so this two I'll just take in the numerator. So this will be two into two, so 400 divided by 21. Okay, so I hope it is so far fine for you to understand. This is twenty one, okay. So if you just go for division, see four hundred twenty one. So first one nine three one, okay. So this is eight nine. I can go for nine. Nine and eighteen. So this is one. You can go for one zero here. So it is around four. Okay, eighty four, sixteen like that. So sixteen means again you can go for two. So it is around nineteen percentage. Okay, efficiency. Eta. Okay. So here, approximately you have to find out closest to 19 percentage. Okay, so this is this was really a good question from thermodynamics. This type of question may come in the future exams. Okay, so I'll stop it here for today. Thank you for your patience.